Sealing unlimited. Hello, Americans. This is Orson Welles. This radio show comes to you from the builders of Lockheed and Vega aircraft. Our story tonight concerns three members of the radio public who are at this moment listening to another radio program. The striking power of a fighting force depends on its supply lines. Air transport has given to this war its quality of extreme mobility and compressed action. Our three listeners are none of them under 90 years old. They agree on almost nothing, including this radio program. Air transport command planes flew five million miles in five months on the Australian front alone with the loss of only one plane. Air Transport Command moved a total cargo of one half million pounds in a single operation. One crew made five South Atlantic crossings in five days. Oh, these radio fellows here today and gone tomorrow. That was Corporal Homer Thicket just heard from, who, as usual, has grabbed the most comfortable chair in the sheltering arms old soldiers' home. By air freighters, the flying boxcars. Flying boxcars. That's dangerous talk. It comes right down to mud, Bob. You can't beat a Missouri mule. Solomon Olmstead was a mule skinner in the Civil War and proud of it. Well, there ought to be a law. Corporal Fickett, however, is a man of more parts, which he freely admits. He was, among other things, the sulfurous editor from 1871 to 1886 of the Hodgetown Scimitar and Clarion Call. Its slogan... Fearless, undaunted... Imperishable Hodge County Americanism. Forever. Ephraim Dexter was in the cavalry at Petersburg. Would have been at San Juan Hill if they'd let me. Of course, all three wear their decorations. The most original of these is on Dexter's lapel. A pair of silver wings. Cargo delivered without incident. Cargo. It could have been diamond drill, sulfur thiosol, walkie-talkies, 50 caliber cartridges, blood plasma, jeeps, peeps, V-mail, power lays, ration K. It would have been any of these things. It is every day. In this case, the cargo was an American export on reservoirs of goodwill. Wendell L. Wilkie. Why don't those fellas stay home, Wilkie's mind their own business? Seven, he didn't just station. up and go. The president Wilkie sent him. The new measure. I quote from him. I have traveled a total of 31,000 miles, which sounds very far. The net impression of my trip, however is not one of distances from other peoples, but of closeness to them, unquote. What's that about? American fighting men are finding this out for themselves. Not only the flyers, today's troops move by air. Yeah, but how many The success of last week's smash through in New Guinea, which caught the Japs flat-footed in Buna, was the surprise landing of men's supplies and even jeeps in the greatest jeeps. airborne infantry movement in history. Paratroops jeeps. were flown yes, 1,500 jeeps. miles nonstop from England to Iran in eight hours for our invasion of North Africa. The air transport command... <coughs> We've heard enough of that. Oh, hold on. No, oh, I'd rather wait for facts. We'll never know what happened till it's all over. We won't know the facts till 20 years after the war. In that case, you'll never know. ATC, that's what that fellow was talking about. The, the uh, Air Transport Command. My grandnephew's in there. Well, you can't get a fighting army any further than Nathan March. Remember Petersburg? My grandnephew, Richard, he, uh, he always said... Oh, uh, by the way, how's he doing? Richard? That uh, grandnephew of yours. You had any word from him lately? Well, he, he's been mighty busy, Richard has. He covers a lot of territory. Last time I heard from him, he had laundry waiting for him in 17 foreign countries. You're the only one in the home who's had a letter this month. Yeah, from the War Department, too. Oh, I seen the envelope. Official business. It was marked. Yeah, that's right. What's the, uh, what's the War Department writing about, Corporal? In uh, due time, Sully. I'll take that up in uh -huh. due time. Uh, just now, I'd like to hear a little more about Dexter's grandnephew, or... Great grandnephew, uh, or great, great, great grandnephew. Well, what th thank you, thank you, Homer. I never thought you was much interested. He's a pilot, you yeah. know, is a head yeah, pilot. Yeah, sure, we know. He yeah. sent me these wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See these wings? Yeah, we've seen the wings. Oh, uh, come uh -huh. to think of it, I never had a close look, Dexter. Uh, mind if I do? Oh, sure thing, Homer. Here you be. They're just uh, regulation pilot's air wings. Uh -huh. Must have stamped a tremendous lot of these things out all at once, Dexter. It's kind of dim for an eagle. What, what's it made of? Silver. Huh. Some of it's come off on your coat, Dexter. What's uh, AEA stand for? Or... Oh, here it is, here it is. Written out on the other side. Uh, Air Eagles of America. Uh, what's that? Uh, that's from back there before he was in the Air Transport Command. Uh, the, uh, Air Eagles of America. The flying tigers, all the same outfit. Oh, oh yeah. uh, wasn't it your nephew got you started making those toy airplanes? Model airplanes. Uh, I started him. Why, why when Richard yeah, was only yeah, a... Yeah, you told us. And, yeah. uh, 
You and him took your first ride in a flying machine. McKinley County know. Fair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, we was up there for 25 minutes. A dollar for every state I saw. Five states I could see. <clears throat> Can't seem like much now, Dexter. At least not to that great grandnephew. With him kiting all over the face of the globe and all that laundry piling. You know what Richard says? He says that only 18 months back there wasn't any ATC. That's uh, Air Transport Command. Uh, they, there was just nothing at all but a little old cubbyhole back somewhere in Washington with two men in it and a stenographer. And now look. Look at what? Look at what? Look at the map. Yeah, what map? Well, I'll draw it for you. Here's us and here's them. Yeah, that's supposed uh, now, to be Europe. Here's oh, Asia. Yeah. And they're flying all over this way to Alaska, oh. to China and Russia like this. This way to Greenland and Iceland and England, down off there from Brazil to Egypt and India and Africa and Hawaii, out this way in Australia and the South Sea Islands. You heard what the radio said. They're going everywhere, carrying everything, right up in the air, everything. How do you know? Well, all the planes we make in this country, one-fifth of them is carrying things. The airplane manufacturers is planning them big enough now to tote a hundred tons. Where'd you get them figures? Oh, nowhere, Sally. He's just making them up. I copied them right out of the airplane magazines. Got the figures right here. Them aviation magazines, my nephew Richard. Give me a subscription. Hey, take that hospital burned up in Nome, Alaska. Well, uh, what about all it? All they did was order a new one, and less than two days afterwards, we got it. Their beds and all less than two days by air. And then some boys out in the Pacific Ocean needed some music, and we flew them a whole piano all the way to the South Sea Islands. Pianos, ukuleles, hot and cold running water, soda fountains on the beach, jitterbugging under the cocoa whoa, 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 whoa. That's where our taxes go, by jings. Mandolins and soda pop. Fastest with the mostest piano music. La di da. Uh, easy, easy. My easy king's there, there's oh, my no. next letter to the papers. No, no. Foreign wars, foreign ways. America's good enough for me. Ought to be good enough for any good American. Hodge County's good enough for any American. Nobody knows who's fighting where. That's what your airplane's done to it. Oh. All started with the automobile. Jeeps. Oh, all started with the automobile. How about the locomotive? How about the steamboat? How about the horse and buggy? Why don't you write a letter to the horse and the wheel? Get after the fellow invented that one. We'd be better off in the trees, wouldn't we, Sally, eating each other? And Corporal Fickett, if you don't think my nephew's a good American, if you think he don't know where he's fighting and who he's fighting and... and well, who, what? who ain't a good American? Just easy, who? Don't I don't easy, like Sally. to hear that kind of talk. Uh, about uh, your nephew, Dexter, your grand-nephew, yes. I believe you said it was, he... Aeroplane pilot and the flying tiger with all that laundry. Well, well, what about him? What about him? What about him indeed? What about those silver wings you're wearing? The AEA, isn't it? The American Eagles of the Air. The Air Eagles of America. <clears throat> I have a communication from the War Department and a box top from a well known breakfast food. Uh, which shall I read first, Dexter? Oh. Well, either one. Either one, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the communication from Washington. Uh, here's the gist of it, Sally. There is no Richard Dexter. Now, as to the box top. You will recognize the label of a popular health cereal. It bears a printed invitation. I will read it. Quote, Boys, 8 to 12, enlist. Be a real live aviator. Win your wings. Here's what you get. The AEA secret code book, your stratosphere helmet, a pilot's logbook, and this handsome pair of official silver wings. Send in this box top and 24 others just like it, and we will enroll you with full privileges. Yours for happy landings in the AEA, the Air Eagles of America. Unquote. Well, Sally, I guess it's bedtime. Uh... The uh, first thing I want you to get straight is, uh, I, I didn't steal them box tops. I paid for them. About these wings. I never said I won them. 
I said they was his. Richards. Corporal Fickett says he's found out there isn't any Richard. He's wrong. First off, I just wanted some to, to boast about, so I saved up for those aviation magazines so it'd sound right. I saved those box tops for one of them log books they sent so as I could tell one plane from another, which none of you can. I took that trip back in 28, I really did, at the McHenry County Fair. I saw them five states. That's what started it. Just don't tell me there ain't any Richard. He looks like that pilot took me up. That fella's somewhere right now fighting in this war. He's Richard, but he don't know it. So's a lot of others. Colin Kelly, O'Hare, Levine. Thousands of them. The president says it's going to be a million. You talk about Petersburg. You're always talking about Petersburg. All right, I was at Petersburg, too, and I'm proud of it. We fought there for the Union, and we won. Abe Lincoln told us no nation could exist half slave and half free. And now we're all free. And when you want to go someplace, you just go, and nobody stops you at the border with a gun when you try to get from one state to another. And your money's good all over. Why, the whole world's just as small as America was back in 1863. Smaller. That's what those big planes are doing. I'm proud of Petersburg, but right now I want to talk about Casablanca. I want to talk about Hang Chow and Libya and Stalingrad and Guadalcanal. No nation can exist half slave and half free. No world can exist half slave and half free. Well, see you in the morning. Night, Homer. Night, Sally. Well, it's the end of our story. Today, the Air Transport Command of the United States Army flies well-marked military highways of the air. Well-marked, some of them, by pioneers like Kingsford Smith and Post and Hughes and Wilkins and Matthen, who flew Lockheeds. We're very proud of that history, proud of that contribution to the safety of today and tomorrow. From the experience of which have come the Lockheed Hudson and Vega Ventura bombers and the P-38 Lightning the world's fastest fighter. Next week, we're going to do a program about the navigator, an important man in an aeroplane. In our show tonight, the cast was all star and all mercury. Joseph Cotton was Solomon Olmsted. Ray Collins was Homer Fickett, and Dexter was played by your obedient servant. Please join us next week. Till then, good night, Americans. has come to you from the Lockheed and Vega Aircraft Corporations of Burbank, California. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.